it's theCUBE from Las Vegas, live at Snowflake Summit 2023 from Caesars Forum, Lisa Martin and Dave Vellante. This is day two of theCUBE's coverage, but you know that because you've been with us and we appreciate that. One of the things, Dave, we're going to be talking about is digital transformations. There is myriad data sources that describe that a pretty significant percentage of them aren't successful. We're going to talk about why that is, how that a company can go from the unsuccessful bucket to the successful bucket. Well, digital transformation, of course, was the big buzzword before ChatGPT stormed the <laughs> world. But the, the, those two vectors are slamming together in a, in a big way. I mean, you know, digital is data and AI, and it's all coming together. It is all coming together. Doesn't everything? We've got two guests here to break this down. Scott Sandschaefer, CEO of Calibo, and Noe Anhel, the CIO of Nature Suite. Guys, great to have you on the program. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Thank you very much. So Scott, I was reading some, some background info that your team provided, and I tell us where this stat comes from. About 70% of digital transformation projects are failing. You've been the CAO of several Fortune 500 companies. Why is that and how can a company go from that, say 30%-ish, unsuccessful, into that successful realm? What does it take? Oh, Lisa, the, the stat comes from a McKinsey study. Um, from my own personal experience as well as the experiences that, that I have with the customers that we engage in, first is sponsorship from the CEO is required to make that successful. And obviously that's a challenge, not only from the CEO, but also the executive team. Also culture in regards to the ability to work uh, well across both technology and business organizations. So obviously many organizations have silos that cause an impact. And then the other element is around talent and the lack of talent, especially in the digital space, uh, in the data space, and having that talent to be able to leverage insights and data to be able to drive the business forward. Well one thing that uh, I think is left uh, unsaid many times is the complexity of both processes as well as technology in each enterprise and that enterprise in regards to establishing a digital ecosystem that makes it easier for the software developer, data scientist, and data engineer to do their job. Noah, you're a CIO, you're the CIO as I mentioned of Nature Suite. Talk to us about what you see, I'm imagining you're in that 70% successful bucket because you're here on theCUBE with Scott. <laughs> That's right. Talk about, as, you, as Scott was saying, you know, a couple of the important things for digital transformations to be successful is CIO support, culture. Culture is challenging. How did you see the digital transformation at Nature Suite? Why, and how are you working with Calibo to drive it? No, thank you, thank you, Lisa. And actually, it's, it's interesting, because when we think about digital transformation, sometimes it's hard to have the conversation because it's kind of a, an abstract concept. What exactly do we want to achieve as a digital transformation? If you ask to one specific area to another, maybe they have their own perception. Definitely, it's, what is the objective? What is the capability that you want to build? Forget a little bit about the digital world. It's the capability. There is a business need. There is a specific, perhaps, process that we need to tackle. And then you can start building from that. So when you talk with different business areas, it's, let's forget a, 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 bit, a little bit about the digital transformation. That's the end of the game but let's go step by step on what exactly are the capabilities that we want to tackle first. That's, that's kind of the road that we are following. And so I, It's like, well, you're right, it's one of those things like, it's kind of fuzzy, but you know it when you see it. And when you see a company that's successfully digitally transformed, data is at their core. Um, you know, they talk about silos all the time at, at these conferences, and, and, it, and while it's true, it, it's, you look at companies like Amazon or Google, their data is at the core, and as opposed to all the data in business processes being separate. So is that a, do you think that's an accurate observation? Have you been able to sort of put more data at the yeah. core of your business so that everybody has access to it? And definitely, is it green? definitely. You, you know that there are, there are this, the same path is, there are concepts like, let's talk about single source of truth. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about having access or data democratization, that it's, that it's always there. But eventually when we think about that and in a business like ourselves, so speaking about greenhouses, there are many things that we need to measure, there are many things, points of data that we need to concentrate and say, what next? The information is there, but the information without having properly a future capability or an insight, it's just like having an asset, a static asset. So definitely the conversations that we have is related on how can we exploit the information, how can we get the, a trends and kind of predict the future actually. Yeah. Yeah. 
I would like that. Anyone predicting the future? Crystal ball? Magic 8-Ball, I would love that. <laughs> Scott, talk to us a little bit about Calibo. How do you help organizations succeed? You brought up a great point on how that digital transformation is the end game. How does Calibo help customers get there? Yeah, so I had mentioned about the complexity of both process and technology. Uh, we as Calibo have a platform that basically sits on top of technologies like Snowflake as well as others from very end, from ideation through, through design, develop, and deploy of, of software. And basically we sit on top and automate and orchestrate those processes as well as those technologies. And we've seen some significant uh, value both in Nature Suite as well as our other customers by improving the speed to deliver digital products by up to 50%. Oh, big number. So Angel, talk us through your use case. Why Calibo? What is it about that technology that really hit the sweet spot in terms of helping to to drive your digital transformation? Definitely, and it's, it's an interesting journey because actually if we think about it, if, if you have different sources of data, different systems, different data points as well. So in order to start creating the value, you need to put somewhere and centralize that information. You need to have the experts as well who, who can connect all the different points. You need to have the infrastructure as well. So there, there are many things that we need to put in place and we choose a way to say, okay, we can build it in that traditional way, which is still valid, but it takes time. So if, if, if we want to hire, hire talent, talent it, it requires maybe 12, 18 months. If we want to look for the technology, we want to go into provisioning the hardware, everything requires time. But in this new age of speed, we didn't want to go into that direction. And that's what Calibo came to the table to say, can we go directly and move faster I don't want to look directly into what is exactly the technology in, in a way to let's knock the door, let's learn about that, let's hire the talent, let's put the, the whole hardware. They take care of all of that. And we just jump in directly to say, I want to be more predictable in the supply, supply area. So explain your business, because you guys create vegetables and greenhouses largely, right? And you, because you have a supply chain, you have you have climate data inside the greenhouses and data in, in, at the edge. Yeah. So uh, explain your data model, because it's, it's, it's far flung. Exactly, exactly. So if we think about all the data points that we have, it is hard, it's, it's a high volume, and we didn't have the whole expertise internally. So that's why we look for this partnership to say, okay, let's, let's go for it, let's put all these data points together and let's jump in directly into the business value realization. Okay, so th there's data in the greenhouses. Yes. Right, and there's obviously corporate data as well. Uh, what are you putting inside of, of Snowflake? So all, the first point, again, like I mentioned about going into the, this digital transformation step by step. Yeah. So we focus first on supply predictability. Definitely with, we do have an ERP, we have, we have transactional pieces, yeah. but we make the choice, and we've been aligned with the, with the whole management team to say this is the first step. Let's take the information from what, what it's actually having an impact across the whole greenhouses. Yes, we, we can speak about the details, about the weather, about the humidity, about the pollinization, about all many variables that we have inside, but we focus first on this area. Supply, predictability. There are more things to come. Okay, but, <laughs> but without the supply, you can't grow, so yes. you start there. Exactly. And then, when did you start this journey? We started the journey one and a half years ago. Now, the, the beauty on this is we have the conversation one and a half years ago, but instead to spend 18 months, actually the first minimum viable product, we have it in less than two months. Oh, okay, so, but, uh, uh, when you started the journey, the, su the supply chain was, it was kind of still a mess, yes. but, it's, but it's, it's calming down a little bit, but it was really unpredictable yes. at the time. So is that why you, I presumably that's why you started there. Exactly, exactly. And yes. has it had, have you been able to discern an impact yet? Yes, because actually we, at the beginning, before all this journey, we, we usually have 85% of accuracy in the forecast for all the production in the greenhouses. Right now we are in a range of between 92, 95% accuracy. Thinking about one, two, three weeks in, in forecast in the future, because as you know, the, our product, it's a fresh product, so it's, it goes <laughs> every single day. No? 
Scott, that uh, put so a smile on your face. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great quote, Noe, from you on the Calibo website that you said, instead of building our own digital ecosystem, which would have taken 12 to 18 months before we could solve business problems, we could start within eight weeks, thanks to Calibo's yeah. platform. That's a huge X factor in terms of time to value, time to market, that's no joke. No, it's, it, that's, that's the reality. So once we decide to go directly with Calibo, they build the whole platform, the architecture, really quick. Actually, we were surprised that it's ready, ready to start building whatever we want. In this case, the GL forecast capability. What's Calibo's superpower? Were you guys app dev folks, database people, consultants? Uh, actually, um, that's a great question. So we're, we're new to the industry. We have a, we're in some new segments uh, around self-service development platform as well as around data and data pipeline creation. And in the end, we see that there's uh, a gap in the industry about how you manage the end-to-end -end process from software development going from the idea all the way to the development. So we're automating all the leading technologies on how they work together. Most companies are trying to get those technologies to work together in a custom way, trying to create custom services. And on the specific use case of Calibo for uh, Nature Suite and for Noe, is where we provided a digital ecosystem out of the box for them, leveraging Calibo, leveraging uh, Snowflake, leveraging uh, AWS and other technologies, and provided them, so then the software development of the yield forecasting capability that Noe had mentioned could be started much quicker and then ultimately be delivered faster, uh, also by up to 40, I think it was 40 to 50% faster in regards to the development as well. So you're really good data people. We're really good data people. At the same point in time, we're good at making, automating the entire software development process around data, uh, as well as digital development. When did you start the company? Uh, we started uh, two and a half years ago. Wow. Ah, okay. So it's not like you got stuck, sucked into the whole Hadoop trend, and, and maybe you got some people who had expertise there, but you, you don't have a ton of technical debt <laughs> oh, we have zero technical debt. Uh, and actually, so. to tell you the truth, we're super, super excited about being only two and a half years old, being also uh, sponsored by, uh, uh, powered by Snowflake, as well as being a Black Diamond uh, partnership here. Um, we're, we're quite excited about the trajectory we're at. Okay, so I'm trying to, I'm, I'm poking at people that are actually using Snowflake as a development platform and developing applications and workflows on Snowflake. Um, and, and trying to get an understanding of, because they're basically saying, hey, do the data engineering and the data pipelining inside of Snowflake. That's a better model. Um, is, is, does that resonate with you? It, it, uh, it definitely does, but there's still additional tools and processes that you need to do before. So you, tools are being used, you know, people are leveraging Jira as well as Confluence to manage your uh, backlog as well as your requirements, and also you need to have DevSecOps tools as well as code repositories and so on. And we're orchestrating and integrating all those technologies into one, let's say, living ecosystem to improve the life and the experience of the software developer, data scientist, and data engineer. And that connects into Snowflake. Do you want Snowflake to, to do more of that and put more of that tooling inside of Snowflake, or is it kind of working the way? Well, well we see that uh, the capabilities that Snowflake are providing is synergetic to what we're doing, as well as we even see that we can help transition from old technologies, legacy, legacy technologies in every single company to uh, to a Snowflake-based uh, single source of truth. Mm -hmm. Single source of truth, incredibly important. Now, last question for you. What's, where do you see the journey going with your partners that you have, with what you've accomplished so far? Obviously, fast time to value, as we mentioned, but what, are some of the, what does the future look like? So, for us, definitely it's moving into the next byte, like I mentioned, and, uh, taking, taking this digital transformation by pieces. So, now that we have more predictable supply, we need to move ahead on what's going on in the, with the commercial area, with marketing, with sales. What is happening in some other processes like we have in supply, in supply not, not in the manufacturing area, but supply logistics. Or perhaps moving into HR as well. So the, the world is evolving, it's continuing evolving. And we, speaking about that, that our, our goal is to actually reach the level of data democratization so that different areas can have access directly to get their own information, to generate their own insights and analysis. It is a journey, it's not really simple, yeah. but definitely it's something that we, we want to leverage through Calibo to say let's put it all together and let's start working from that. Awesome. Noe, Scott, thank you so much for joining Dave and me on the program, walking us through how Nature Suite is on that road to successful digital transformation and really providing advice and best practices for those folks who might be on that journey and struggling. We appreciate your insights and what you shared with us. 
Thank you very much. Thank All you. right, our pleasure for having you. We want to thank you for watching for our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. After a short break, Dave and I are back. We're going to be talking about Snowpark Container Services that was just announced yesterday. Big news. Yep. Big news, you won't want to miss that. We're back after a break. You can catch all of our Snowflake content and all of the Cube content on thecube.net. Analysis and editorial on siliconangle.com 24 by 7. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. <laughs>